this slide, and unfortunately a slide aligns very well with the slides John showed earlier, demonstrates the carbon emissions of the globe, the blue line, the carbon emissions of the globe, if no action is taken, are anticipated to rise in, from the 1990 level of 40 um, gigatons of carbon emissions, doubling by 2050 to 80 gigatons. The generally accepted scientific consensus is that we need to reduce that by half of the 1990 level to 20 gigatons of carbon emissions in order to achieve a reasonable chance at climate stabilization. And for people who want the numbers, that's 450 parts per million, two degrees centigrade rise. Okay, we need to halve on the 1990 levels or 25% of what will happen if we take no action. That consensus is based around a document called the 2007 Bali Climate Declaration by scientists, if anybody wants to go and, and, and actually look it up. But that's where we're getting our, cons our, that's the consensus we're looking at. During that period, gross domestic product will also, is also forecast to rise significantly. So as well as halving the carbon emissions on an absolute basis from 1990, we need to reduce our carbon emissions relative to, to gross domestic product on an even greater basis. And in fact, this is what the graph looks like of what we need to do to reduce carbon emissions per unit of gross domestic product, meaning still allowing the, the economy to grow, but reducing our carbon emissions sufficiently. The average reduction, the, the, the sort of the, the reduction number by 2050 based on 1990 is 80% per unit of gross domestic product. And in order for developing countries to be able to catch up, developed countries need to do a little bit more. They actually need to do about 90%, so developing countries can head to about 70%. That's what, corporate, that's what countries need to do. But the question really for us now is what do companies need to do if that's what countries need to do? This is the, the same graph, and what a company needs to do is to match or exceed that trend, to re reduce its carbon emissions by at least the same or more than that gross domestic product intensity measure that, I, that we had on the previous page. Now, using this measure, value added, as a, which is the ec economic contribution of a company to gross domestic product, what a company therefore needs to do is reduce its carbon emissions per, per unit of value add by the same or more than the, the carbon emissions per unit of gross domestic product for the company to know that it is contributing to the climate stabilization targets that are required globally. So what does that mean for us? This is BT's carbon emissions in terms of intensity, our intensity per unit of value add compared to that GDP. Now, we're much lower. We're not lower because of the action we're taken. We're lower because we're fortunate enough to be in an industry that is not energy intensive. The reduction you can see there is due to the actions we've taken, that 60% you saw earlier on. Um, but what, so what does that mean for us in terms of the future? So this is, this is bringing those two graphs together, basically putting them on the same scale. And that blue line is what we have achieved so far. That's the 60% reduction you saw earlier. So what we need to do in order to stay on or below that gross domestic product intensity target, which actually amounts to about 9% year on year, is we need to reduce our emissions to stay below that line um, now, we, you'll, what you'll see here is we've set a target for 2020. For, for us and the life cycle of our products and the life cycle of our investments, 2050 is further out than we can really plan for in any sensible way. 2020 is about the right planning timescale for us. So we are setting ourselves a target to reduce our emissions, our carbon emissions, on an intensity basis per unit of value add by 80% globally by 2020. And the theory behind that is that we are able to say if every company were to do the same thing, set up the same methodology, the corporate world would be on track to achieve what the globe needs to, be to, achieve, to, get to achieve to get to that 450 parts per million. More will need to be done after that. That's not the end of the story in 2050, but it gets us on, keeps us all on the right track. These are some of the things we're going to do to do it. 
These are big challenges ahead for us. We're already one of the biggest renewable energy buyers in the UK. One of the key things we've announced, we announced last November, is that we, in, we intend by 2016 to have 15, 25%, 250 megawatts, 25% of our energy needs produced by wind on or adjacent to our own locations. Um, because we, we've, we've needed, we actually feel we need to be putting our own wind turbines up in order to get enough renewable energy. Um, and a number of other things there that you, that you can read through. I think the important thing, though, is we feel this is a, a step ahead of, of where we were before. We've really tried to make a step change. We've really tried to set an objective for ourselves that we can look around and say, if everybody can follow a similar sort of methodology, the corporate world will be on track to be achieving what we need to globally.